ASCAP Foundation. We are a, ch a public charity based in New York, and we provide support for music education and talent development programs all across the country. I'm here to welcome you to Songwriters the Next Generation, a program of the ASCAP Foundation and the John F. Kennedy Center, which showcases the work of emerging songwriters and composers in the fields of jazz, R&B, folk, and pop on this beautiful Kennedy Center Millennium Stage. Songwriters the Next Generation was conceived by the late Dr. Billy Taylor, the wonderful jazz educator, a pianist, and composer who was an ASCAP Foundation board member, and also was the director of the Kennedy, Center, Kennedy Center's jazz programs. With us this evening is uh, to introduce our music creator artists and to engage them in a brief discussion about what is behind their music is an ASCAP singer-songwriter who hosts the nationally syndicated public radio program, Mountain Stage. Last year, he released a CD of his original works coupled with some of his favorite classics titled, Live Forever. Please join me in welcoming Larry Gross. Thanks very much, Julie, and thank you folks for coming out here to the Kennedy Center, the Millennium Stage, and also those of you who are watching uh, as this show is streamed this evening. Uh, as Julie said, this was conceived by the foundation to showcase some folks who uh, probably need a bigger spotlight. They're emerging artists, and not only are they songwriters and composers, or if they weren't, they wouldn't be involved with ASCAP, because ASCAP's all about writers and composers, but in this case, they have to be performers, too, and you're going to find out tonight that they are fantastic performers. Two great voices tonight, very different styles of music from the first group to the second. And first up, we have a duo, a brother and sister duo, and they grew up in Pennsylvania. They live in Brooklyn now, uh, but when they were growing up in their teens, they started making music, and she was the songwriter and singer, and he was the drummer and he was the band, I guess, and, and she was the singer in the band. Since then, they got a little bit more collaborative. They work together now. They've formed a, a group they call Paper White, and they did that about three years ago, but before, long before that, they were playing together and as they grew up doing music together. As Paper White, it's, it's synth pop, it's dream pop, it's uh, beautiful, beautiful sounding music. You're gonna hear some synthesized textures here, and then uh, he's gonna play, Ben Marshall's gonna play live percussion, both, both electronic and, and acoustic percussion, and Katie Marshall is going to be playing keyboards, and she's going to be the vocalist, too. Uh, their debut EP called Magic was named Hype Machine's Most Blogged Artists Twice, and then their next one, Escape, is best known for the single Getaway, which was a, a, very, a very cool song, as well as had a great video shot in Iceland. Their third one is just coming out. They release it one song at a time, so they've released the first song from that one. If you live around here, you may have seen them already. They were at Jam in Java last fall, and just uh, last month, they were here at uh, DC9. So please welcome, right now, if you would, give a warm welcome to Katie and Ben Marshall, Paper White. Thank you. 
slower than ever But my heart can't be ignored much. Once again, we are paper white.
caught in a jet stream. I took a leap of the wings to help me see if I'm lost in daydream. Where is it all taking me? Send me free.
much. We're so happy to be here. Got two more for you. Me and Burr, one night for Jula on the table. Are you ready for this one? Is this such protected? And it's saying it over. I wanna give in, but I can't do it on my own. So much. This is our last one. It's called Human Nature. He just released it um, a few weeks ago, and uh, we're so excited to keep releasing and writing and share music with people like you. Thank you so much.
Paper White, we have a couple CDs for sale and shirts and vinyl in the back. We'd love to say hi. Thank you, ASCAP. Thank you, Millennium Stage. Katie and Ben Marshall, Paper White, give it up for them. And as Katie just told you, there will be both these guys and uh, the next group will be back there after the show is over to uh, say hello to you if you want to ask them a question and hopefully you'll pick up some of their music and take it home with you. And Paper White, you can probably get a chance to hear them hopefully within the next year around here. They play here at DC9 and played at Jam and Java and uh, you never know where you're going to hear them. But we'll get them back out at the, at the end of the show and maybe ask a question or two. This is sponsored, put together by the ASCAP Foundation and Songwriters the Next Generation is what it's called. And if you don't know what ASCAP is, A-S-C-A-P, acronym is American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. It's been around for over 100 years, and it was set up. It's, it's kind of like the parent company. This ASCAP Foundation is, is a side venture that's made to uh, promote people and, and give out grants and so forth. But the regular company is a collection, a way to collect money for royalties for people who write songs and compose music for movies and television and everything else. You probably, maybe you do know that back in, you know, two centuries ago in the late 1800s when pop music started kind of in America, famous writers like Stephen Foster died penniless because they didn't really have a way to collect royalties for the music that people sang all over the place. They could make a little money off sheet music but if people went out and performed their songs, they couldn't even protect them. They could, the people could say they wrote them themselves. Copyright protection uh, was, was not just like it is now. And there certainly was no way to collect money. So anybody who writes songs, if any of you out here write songs, you know that probably know ASCAP because if you've ever had a song played on a radio uh, or any, any kind of broadcast or narrow cast or anything else, then ASCAP is the way that you would collect money for that song. And, those of us, I had a hit song once many years ago before y'all were all born, and I'm glad ASCAP was around because uh, otherwise I would not have collected uh, what I did. So it's a great organization, and the foundation is also a great thing, and they do a lot for people like these guys you just heard who are emerging artists. You heard Julie say that I made a record last year. I hadn't made one for 27 years. So I'm what you call a submerging artist. These guys are emerging artists. We're kind of on the same level, but I'm going a different direction than they are. You're going to hear a lot more from them as time goes on. I really like her voice. Great, great singing right there, Katie and Ben. And I know you're going to love the next singer, too. Folks are obviously here because they're songwriters, but it's hard not to notice what great singers, what great performers we have this evening, and let me see how we're doing here. Are we getting there? Almost there. A little change over time. You can see that our, our next guest brought some musicians with her. Uh, some of them are from New York and some from Philadelphia. And I think she lives in, in Philadelphia herself. She's a very versatile singer, uh, goes over several different styles. Uh, jazz is, would be the main one, but also R&B, soul, pop. She's been on the road singing with 
and sometimes backup singing with a lot of folks, uh, Robert Glasper, Christian McBride, the great uh, bass player, jazz bass player, and Ed Sheeran, and, and many, many others. And it's great. It's about time she got into the spotlight herself. She was actually here in the Kennedy Center last year. If you saw Amos Lee, great singer and songwriter, she opened for Amos, and she may have sung with him. I'm not sure about that. But she has partnered with Grammy Award-winning drummer and producer Ulysses Owens Jr. and uh, music director and producer Adam Blackstone to create her debut album called Gorgeous Chaos. It's got a lot of great critical recognition. I think she may have some back there after the show. It was released out last year. It went to number 14 on the Billboard Jazz chart. Tonight she's going to perform, of course, her original works. Are we ready? Beautiful. Put your hands together right now and welcome Lauren Talese. This first song I'm going to do is a song I wrote while watching a movie with Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. It inspired some steam and I don't know, when I watch the movie I can just smell the leather bound books in this beautiful office, the oak desk and the whiskey that we used to be allowed to drink when we went to work. They should bring that back, but we'll talk about that later. This song is called Trench Coat.
so much. Thank you. This next tune is a song that I wrote with a very dynamic musician named Eric Wortham II. And it features none other than Robert Glasper on my debut album called Gorgeous Chaos. This song is about when you know that your relationship is coming to a close, romantically anyway. It's called Winter. The barren trees, the sidewalks freeze, oh no. I see winds blow right on windows, oh no. Someone tell me where the seasons changed because it seems spring was just yet.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, before we start this next tune, I want to introduce this amazing band. We songwriters are nothing without the people who actually bring our thoughts and our vibes into fruition. So let's give them a hand. Take some very talented folks. So as I mentioned before, Toru Dodo is on keys. Directly behind me is Anwar Marshall on drums. And my friend Josh is joining me tonight on bass. And this guy is Van Yunsen. <laughs> so we're gonna do two more tunes. These songs are original tunes, um, the first of which actually was written by a very good friend of mine named Ben O'Neill. So we're gonna do TikTok. the grandfather clock near the mantelpiece. What was I thinking? Or how could I know that you'd really go away? Sometimes I think of Central Park Sometimes I think of sipping wine in the dark. Sometimes I think of simple things like your smile at night or your beating heart. But your heart beats warmer than the clicking of this tick tock. Goes the grandfather clock. The mantelpiece. What was I thinking? Or how could I know that you'd really go away? Sometimes I hear your name at night. I can almost see your. I hear the simple things A giggle, a footstep, a laugh, a sigh But your sigh breathes warmer than the clicking of the tick tock Daytime, nighttime Tick-tock. Mm, 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 tick-tock. Mm
Thank you. Thank you so much. We have one more before we depart. This song was written by myself and one of my best friends, Erica Hicks. It's called Forgive and Forget. so much for being such a beautiful audience. My name is Lauren Talese. That's L-A-U-R-I-N-T-A-L-E-S-E. -E. Please find me and friend me on Facebook and Instagram. I would love to hear from you. I do have a few copies of my debut album, Gorgeous Chaos, with me for sale, and I would love to meet you in any case. Thank you. Have a good one. Lauren Talese right there. And she will be coming right back out. We're going to sit down here for just a moment and 
have a little chat with uh, both Ben and Katie and Lauren. And then after that, they will be out with their CDs in the back there. There'll be a little merch table out there, and they'll say hello. And But first, we'll get some chairs out here and have a little talk. So, Katie, Ben, come on, come on out. Well, yeah, uh, well, there'll be, don't worry, there'll, there'll, be, there'll be four, I hope, in the end. No musical chairs tonight. They're all musical. All right, we'll get some more mics out here. Fantastic. Two very different styles of music uh, and some very talented people on all sides. Here you go. Lauren's going to be coming back too. I shouldn't sit down until the lady gets here. I didn't know you were well, that's all right. Have a seat. Talk with Katie and Ben first. You guys have a certain style of pop music. I mean, some people call it synth pop, uh, dream pop, or whatever. As you grew up, uh, in, how did how did you grow into this style? Was it something that immediately, you know, computer driven, or how did it start? Yeah, kind of. Um, well, Push that up if it didn't on. Check, check, there one, two. Um, yeah, it was, uh, in, in the beginning, Katie was writing these songs. I had no clue she was writing songs at all. We're brother and sister. I forget if that was brought up. Yeah. So when, when we were younger, she uh, she had these songs, and uh, and I just... I had no clue that she'd even been writing songs, and they were great. And so I, you know, had a computer, and I was just learning how to use, you know, logic and whatever, and programming, and and that was sort of the the way that we started making music. Um, and then fast forward many years later, we we uh, we were doing a much more organic kind of acoustic setup and producing the music that way and arranging it that way and getting our friends to play in the band. And uh, you know, a few studio bills later. We decided, hey, what if we just like strip it down to us and see what happens? And so I think the electronic thing is more m my passion, and, and then the songwriting and sort of the. Uh, it doesn't make sense to not have acoustic elements with Katie's voice, in my opinion. So that's kind of the hybrid thing, I think. Yeah, it works very well. And uh, again, if you don't know, if you've probably thought about this before, but young bands starting out, one of the big problems is if you have several people in the band it's really difficult to make any money because you're not getting paid much and the more you divide it, the harder it gets. So many people are looking for ways to, to do it a little bit more simply. Uh, when you write, do you, do you write on the synth or do you write with a guitar, piano, or something else? Um, there have been a couple songs where I've been inspired by a specific sound on the synth, but for the most part I write um, on just my keyboard or piano. Um, and we'll either come up with a full song that way, and then I'll bring it to Ben, and he'll do his magic on it. Or, or sometimes Ben will have a production idea, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, many times people are surprised that songwriters, different instruments give them different ideas. You hear a sound, and it, is that I true for I you guys? I mean, that's the main reason I fell in love with making music on a computer because it's an instant gratification when, and you can have any instrument that you want and so you pull up a sound and it inspires a certain mood and then you can just, it's so much easier for me at least to be creative that way whereas I think if I were to sit down at a piano sometimes I can get that kind of writer's block feeling like I don't know what to do with these same keys anymore or something, yeah. you know? And, and so it's now though it's, the writing is a real collaboration, you, you work together. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah it isn't you writing and writing. he's... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, my last question before I'm going to turn to Lauren here is, is where paper white is a flower, right? Yeah. Is that, and what, what's, is there any significance of why you chose that name? Yeah, so I, um, I actually wrote a song during college um, for a songwriting class about, like, the personification of a paper white flower. Oh. And uh, it was kind of one of the first songs that we would later think of as the beginning of paper white. And I actually just put a clip on Instagram and titled it Paper White. And a friend said, oh, I love your new band name. 
<laughs> we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's another thing that often happens. Bands, you think these bands come up with these great names, and often it's something they say, and then people latch onto it, and then you can't get rid of it. But in this case, it's a great well, name. Well, especially now, I, I challenge anybody to think of a band name and then Google it to see if it's already a band, because yeah, that's <laughs> the internet has ruined that permanently. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> another, another uh, serious problem. What y'all, you started, though, when you were in your teens, early teens, mid-teens? Because you're not yeah. that old now. I mean, what was that, 10 years ago? Yeah. 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 It's only been I love it when they say, oh, it's a long time ago when I started this. Uh, well, I'm well, 26 it's half a lifetime now. ago. <laughs> yeah. Seems that way to y'all. Yeah. And uh, Lauren, you're originally, you're, if, I'm, if I'm reading it right, uh, don't, some of my stuff I get from the internet, so it may not be true. It may, it may not. You're, you're from uh, Ohio originally? And Cleveland, Ohio. And you went to I'm school? proud of it. Good. And you went to school up there? I went to the Cleveland School of the Arts, and that's where my love of music kind of started. Did you study jazz vocal, or did you study classical I singing? I studied classical first, then jazz, like as a grade school student. I was in an ensemble called the Jazz Art Ensemble. Anybody watching? Hey, Jazz Art Ensemble folks. <laughs> um, and at an early age, I, I would say 14, I was just like, oh my god, I love Sarah Vaughan, I love Nina Simone, I love Nancy Wilson. So. That kind of piqued so, my interest. So you really got into it's funny. I have a daughter that's 11, and she loves Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire and mm -hmm, all the music. You mm -hmm. think 11 year old? Why would they do it? Because it's great. It's that's great. Why, it's know. classic. It's amazing. <laughs> well, so at that point, you you, you really g jazz grabbed you. Yes. And but you were singing me. earlier, like when you were a little girl. I was. I had experience first singing gospel in a choir, um, a community choir called the WZAK Choir. Um, and I met a lot of longtime friends that I still have there, and that kind of gave me um, just experience singing with other folks and, and what it's like to be a part of a group and to, you know, kind of the tension and release of gospel laid mm -hmm. a great foundation. But I never thought I had a, a gospel voice, so when I found jazz, I just was like, wait, that sounds more like me a little bit, so got into that too. I think you have a voice that could go a lot of directions. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds like somebody that's been going since she's 10 years old, don't you think? I mean, it's like Thank you. she's so at ease, comfortable on stage. And like them, that was only 10 years yeah. ago. <laughs> that was just it a wasn't. couple of years ago when you, when you were a child. Yeah, uh, we well, it, you, You've gone, I know you've gone and sung some backup with people before. Is that, is that fun? Is that frustrating? You, you say, I, I should be out there instead of back here? It's amazing. In fact, I would say it's tempting just to do that. Just because you see the world, you learn the music, you're awesome performing backstage, and then after the show you have nothing to worry about. No press, no radio dates, no early morning calls. You just got to show up and do good. Yeah. So it was just a great life. Seeing the world from backstage is, is hey, awesome. And if nobody <laughs> shows up, it's not your fault. You're not, you're not the right. headliner. <laughs> But no, it's, and also I would think you learn a lot. I was going to say that I've had the pleasure of singing background for some amazing vocalists. A couple I'll mention, um, Bilal Oliver, his stage name is Bilal. He was, it's like being in school, being in college all over again, singing for him. Vivian Green is an amazing vocalist with mm -hmm. a dynamic voice. And just watching her navigate the world as a woman in business was really enlightening and great for me. So, yeah. Have you, has anybody covered your songs yet? You know what? This girl, I don't know her name, but she covered one of my songs for school, and oh, nice. I was touched. She covered Forgive and Forget, the last tune I sang, and it was just amazing. It felt, I can't even explain the feeling. It was amazing. It's pretty great when someone <laughs> sings your song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a, really, it's a real thing out there then. Exactly. I was like, I didn't know if I was dreaming all this, but she made it real. <laughs> did you, did, how, did, how did the songwriting part come along? I mean, you were singing, obviously. When did it occur to you that maybe you should have your own voice uh, in the songs, too? I have always written. I've always written my own personal diary from a young age, like seven or eight. Um, my little kitten diary that I had in my room. So I started there, and then some kind of way I started writing poems, and then for a class project, maybe in the fifth or sixth grade, we were supposed to do a project, and I said, why don't we write a song for this social studies class? And that kind of like 
piqued my interest, like, hey, I, I can kind of do this thing a little bit. So, yeah. So now are you, are you getting serious? I mean, are you, <laughs> are you putting, you putting time of every day to write or is this? <laughs> I would say, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, it's my life. Well, great. I mean, that's because songwriting, some people don't. Some people treat it as a job every day. They go in the studio and they write something and others wait for the inspiration. Which side do you fall I with? like to say I do a little bit of both. I don't like to force it at all, but I'm always, I'm a very animated person, as you guys might be able to yeah, tell. Yeah, we could have that. <laughs> I'm always watching Disney movies or some old Hollywood movie and something in one of those movies always just kind of starts something or just even being outside walking around Philadelphia where I live now, there's something that's always inspiring. Not a day goes by where I'm not inspired or I'm not like recording something in my voice notes in my iPhone. When you get that idea, do you sing it, do you put it down recording or do you write it down or both? I sing it into my voice notes on my phone so like if I'm on the train you might see me in the corner like um, or I'm writing it, you know, the lyrics down. Sometimes the lyrics come to me first, like I have this feeling come over me and I want to write about this, or it'll be just the melody and I'll be like, this song feels like it's about this, mm -hmm. and I'll do that. And then more often than not, I'll call up one of my great friends, Eric Wortham. He's playing piano for Adele right now, but he and I have this great partnership, and as soon as I sing something, we, we often joke that, you know, he plays what's in my head because, yeah. yeah. Nice. So it's, it's nice. great. Well, it's funny because you'd think you get, and you guys, I'm sure, have the same thing. You think a songwriter, you, th you get an idea, you think, oh, I'm not going to forget that, but you do forget yeah. it. Yeah. And if you don't you put it down the some thing. way, yeah. then even 10 hours later, it's like, what was that that yeah. I thought of? It's, it's a weird thing. Did you guys have people, like when you were getting it together, were there people that you thought inspired you or that you thought, wow, that's, that's something I really like a lot? not saying they're your idols, but just people that you listen to that you, you consciously or unconsciously, they, their style was influential. You know, every time we get a question like this, I think we like never have that, that just yeah. the go-to <laughs> answer because it's just so well, many different styles of music yeah. and things. And yeah. I mean, we both went to school for music. So there was, you know, I, there was a long period of me studying jazz and world music and all these things. And, you know, even if in Paperwhite, it's, it's then a synth pop duo. But I, I think that all those things somehow come in and Im influence it that in some way, um, but not in a way that I can really tr trace any lines. No, of course not. <laughs> it doesn't work like that generally. Yeah. Nobody has a direct line almost. Where'd you go to school? Uh, Berkeley College of Music. And, and you yeah, too? Same Both way. of you went to Berkeley? Yeah. Yeah, I read something. Well, once again, I read on the internet, I guess, that uh, uh, Postal Service was somebody that uh, you listened to that had oh, been. Yeah. Which I like. I mean, I could see that. Yeah. That was one that kind of struck the, the me. Actually, the first things that we made when Katie was still in, in high, school, high school, that was very much yeah. inspired by. I mean, there, you know, you could see some relationship. It's not you don't sound like yeah. that, but it's 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 in the same ballpark. Well, it's time to close it up. And thank you guys for being here at the Millennial Stage. And uh, thank you guys for being here and performing so so thank well. So Thanks to the ASCAP thank you. Foundation. And uh, this will be the final edition this year of Songwriters, the Next Generation. We'll see you next year. Bye bye. <laughs>